Hello and welcome to the Sports of Weekly. Yes, we are taking a look at what is happening in uh, local football. And we are just a few days away from uh, the international break. Yes, uh, Engin Firat, or Engin Firat, if you may, has named his squad uh, for the national football team, Arambi Stars, that will be in action for the CAF AFCON 2025 qualifiers. Remember, CAF AFCON 2025 will be held in Morocco um, with Cedric Musumba and Roger Sistemi. We will be dissecting that, the squad that has been named and what to expect uh, from them. Uh, first match, we settled, Kenya rather settled for uh, a draw against Zimbabwe. Second match, Kenya got a win against Namibia. So the two matches that will be coming up, Kenya will be taking on Cameroon, home rather away in Cameroon and then home in Uganda and not Kenya. Yes, as much as it seems uh, very obscene, yes, we'll be playing away in uh, Uganda. Cedric Msumba, Roger Sistemi. Let's uh, begin with uh, this thing of us playing away. Sedo, it doesn't feel even right. We are playing at home, but we are playing away. We are playing in Uganda. <laughs> home, away, away home. Yes, home away from home. You know, going by actually what's happening on our infrastructure, I might say that, okay, uh, seven, 75 percent is quite okay to me and maybe that five percent is in doubtful given to the reason that also you can see the kind of funds arambesta can really happen to pull mm -hmm. given the result that it has just registered and if it happened actually to happen here and maybe i'm just assuming maybe put it even into lindsay does not have that capacity mm -hmm. to contain the funds that arambesta can pull right now because yes. i'm looking at this particular match and i'm like arambesta has already qualified for africa cup of Russia 2025 given if it can go ahead and Get win the, six, against, the, uh, the six remain the, the six points ahead of them in October. Yes, that means maybe if it win away from Cameroon and then happens to win back in at Uganda. home, those are ten good yes. ten good points to take. Mm -hmm. Arambe star coming twenty twenty five uh, to Morocco. Yes. So as when that match was to be played here, each and every thinking that is really rolling faster into my mind will be actually a mirror of in other fan here in Kenya. They will want to access that particular pitch to the, with an essence of maybe boosting their team to ensure that it qualifies for Africa Cup of Nations. I think Sedo. the infrastructure that are in space currently, Sedo. they are not quite okay to hold that kind of competition. Had you been back home, Ungevuka Boda, I want to see you to watch the match. Exactly. But now the greatest fear is, and I understand uh, and also I agree with some of the Federation uh, thinking, mm -hmm. You know, we have had that kind of uh, rivalry, Kenya and Uganda. You understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's and that at rivalry, some yeah. given point, there's a time when Uganda was about to qualify in Africa Cup of Nations, and we were playing them back in their home. Yes. But Kenya the was far away from qualifying, but we just went there to spoil for them <laughs> the game. So as they would like to spoil it for Kenya. Yes. We happen to play away from home. We are playing, embracing to their pitch, and they allow their fans into the that particular stadium. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty quite sure they will not be there to support Rambesta. Yes. They will be there to spoil it for Rambesta. They can even turn again and support Cameroon, right? Yes. So. Now, 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 now that Cedric has mentioned that, <laughs> that match will be played behind closed doors. No, that was a tactic from the Federation because yes. they knew pretty sure that uh, what happened between, uh, was it uh, Zimbabwe against uh, Cameroon? Cameroon, yes. Yeah. The Ugandan fans went there specifically to mm -hmm. cheer Cameroon courtesy of the Andre Manchester United goalkeeper Andre Onana. And you saw the viral videos we saw on social media. They were just amazing. And that tells you indeed that if by chance Kenya would have allowed the fans to enter into that stadium, definitely the pressure would have put to Harambe Stars. But now we have seen in the last few matches or so, Harambe Stars try are seems to be playing so well without pressure when they are not having fans. But, you know, the 12th month is always important in this scenario because um, it is so crucial that we remain with four matches, but the upcoming two matches, two-legged tie, are so crucial that whoever will get the maximum point in that match will have definitely uh, gotten a ticket to Morocco 2025. But now, without the fans, it's so going to be so painful for Arambi South because the fans are also entitled to push and watch their national team play and also maybe have a chance to see some of these quality players across the world, the world best players, the Nguisas. But now, having been locked, not given a chance, cutters of Kenya not having... Uh, standardized uh, facilities to hold such particular matches. You know, it is a shame, Robinson, and said of course, yeah, because it's, it's it can't shame. continue happening like this. I think this is the third time this year that our Rambe stars are playing home away from home. And you know, it's not that it is uh, happened like um, a surprise. We knew that we'll be getting ourselves involved in these matches. Why wouldn't we have pre planned earlier and prepared ourselves for such scenarios? And you know, it's more expensive. You know, we haven't been 
told about how much money has been spent when Harambe Stars play plays. home away from home. Yes. It is really expensive. It's better this team if plays at home because, yes, on one hand, you'll spend money, but you'll get another money through the fans mm. who will come and yeah. storm into the pitch. Yeah. But now, when you are losing money on just one side, the team playing away from home is so sad. And the players themselves sometimes tell you, we need that 12 month to push out. Well, let's wait and see what will happen. Serik Mzumba, this... this is this the first time that we are seeing a desired uh, backline for Rambi Stars? I mean, Anyembe was called into the squad. You have uh, Johnston Omura, you have uh, uh, Okumu, and you have Marcelo. Is this the first time that we are seeing that desired backline for Rambi Stars? You know what, Robinson? I'm just crossing my fingers. I just to feel like all these players that have been called into the camp currently, as it, as it stands, they actually hold 100% fitness to represent us in that particular battle, given to the mere fact that they will be meeting actually a lame Cameroon team. Remember what is going actually around the Cameroon team, though mm -hmm. they are professionals. Samuel Eto'o has been banned for six months. And there are, there are mm -hmm. some of the players actually who plays in, who trades in Italy who are mm. really, Zambo, Zambo and they, are, they are not ready to embrace that particular game. And yeah. that will be to the advantage of this squad that mm -hmm. Indian Ferret actually has really uh, assembled in the camp. Going by that particular backline, and we have seen what that backline can do if they are fit enough to represent their nation in cap in full capacity, they have all the qualities that can carry all the way with them, and it's hard to break them. Actually, we are talking about the Saliba of where Eshitemi embraced a lot. We have our own Saliba here in Kenya, mm -hmm. and at some point, even the that is Okumu. Yeah, and you see the charisma, the maturity, and how he commands that particular defense. It also gives other players who plays around him some kind of morale and value of really working hard for that national team. Mm -hmm. You go by the essence that Anyembe is coming back, mm -hmm. I'm pretty quite sure because that's the number that Arambe Star has struggled actually to fill yes. since, I think, back in, uh, in 2019, yeah. in Africa Cup of Nations, we saw that number actually, we were the return, struggling. Some of them actually, you had them, I think you had one of the representative, Kenya representative who traded the particular number and mm. he was actually finding it hard even to answer some of your questions about what really transpired in that party and how, what are these that the number has been struggling. We have been struggling to get somebody who can really mark that space. But Anyembe came in, gave us the value and he also showed us that if everything is okay, he can really transit from not playing as a wing back but also offer the service at the centre back when required to. And that's the utility players that we have. That backline to me, I have full confidence with it. If it is fully and ready to really uh, deliver at in a hundred percent capacity, mm -hmm. and as it is currently, yes. if we happen to go with that team as it's assembled right now, yes. given the midfield and maybe the front line also included by Rolunga, they are equally fit. Mm -hmm. I don't think if Cameroon will find Kenya as a walk in a park, mm -hmm. it will Ech be hard for them actually. Ech to Ech the car. Uh, there's a there's one young man that everybody's talking about, but we've not seen what he does for his club uh, translate to what he does for the national team. T Timothy from Elsborg. At the moment, everybody's saying uh, that, you know, he's one of the best players that we have in the country. Uh, he's playing for Elsborg. We've seen uh, rumors that uh, Brentford from the Premier League, you know, one team and other clubs, but we've not seen him do that for the national team. I think it, I think he's a boy on transition. Bearing in mind that uh, last time I it, I yeah, Alipotea. <laughs> Ata prior to that, <laughs> Ata prior to that, your games in Zilikuwa um, Malawi. Yes, that is a Guinness uh, Cote d'Ivoire and also yeah. Malawi. Yeah, he was one of the players who were like I think bright sparks. But mm -hmm. you know, uh, the most and doing thing about teams that are in decision making. That is one of the things I saw about him because he had the confidence, he has the pace, but now the in decision making. What time am I going to release this pass? Mm -hmm. What time am I going to shoot? That is one of the things maybe made us not to beat uh, Kodiva because we had a number of chances in the first half. And you know, Olunga was almost getting to closer to score and then it was just a matter of uh, Timothy or Oma to just release that ball at the right time and the right moment. But it never happened. Well, that's gone. But now, coming to the recent match that he went a wall. It yeah. was shocking. But you know in the national team there's a lot of things that happen and you know it's just high time the technical bench and the federation come clear and tell us exactly what transpired because there's no way a player can be released by his team to come for the national duty and then just go MIA like but that. She, she yeah. tell me, the, 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 club did not, the club released him yeah. and yet from their tracking they did, know where he they did not know where he went. Yeah. The national team under FKF yeah. also said they called him yeah. but they don't know if he he was coming or not. Yeah, th that's, that's something that is a concern to us, Cedric, because I understand even the l during that, the last uh, international break, mm -hmm. uh, two players or so also, actually three, 
the three players went MIA and that was just shocking. A national team, you have been called for the national team duty. You have been released by your club and then here fans are looking forward to see you and maybe see you help the national team and then you are missing in action. That's just something like disciplinary uh, case. You know, so, there are so many yeah. dirty things that are really making us really start doubting how uh, our dressing room is really being managed at the bar back room. Because mm -hmm. you understand talking of players disappearing. Some of there are some rumors that players even they are so indisciplined and say that they can really happen to go after each other in that particular camp. Mm -hmm. To an extent they are being, being disqualified. So some of them actually they are being punished yes. not to embrace the games. No, talking also uh, to the value of uh, Timothy Oino, I'm not quite sure if we literally filled him equally well in our national team. Yesterday I took my time and uh, I remember having... You watched this clip. Watched yeah. uh, Manchester United. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to follow him and see what value does this guy carry. Actually his team yeah. got a win against yeah. uh, Roma. But you see how he was playing him. They were mm -hmm. playing him box to box yesterday. Mm -hmm. Here when he comes here it's to Kenya, we yes. trade him to a wing. To a wing. Yeah. And yesterday listening to a commentator, he was like, ah, he was one of the sparks. Mm -hmm. You would For see that Oxford, particular yeah. team. And necessary, watching him playing, you could tell how he has actually the muscle he's carrying the body to the physical self, I think he stands a chance of being a box-to-box -box player because he can destroy people at the but midfield. But at, at the same time, box-to-box, -box, we have uh, Odada, we have uh, Akumu. Akumu. Yes. So, who would you bench? No, you need to sacrifice. You need to sacrifice because now, right now, but also go to... Me, at the same time, Akumu has been one of the best players under Firat. Well, Akumu has been a, a good player, but yes. now look at Odada. Odada not getting, has been not getting many Sadunde mm -hmm. in Scotland. So you have to sacrifice one. Mm -hmm. Take a player who is not energetic and in the best form of his life. That yes. is uh, Timothy Oma, just the way Cedric has spoken mm -hmm. here. Take Timothy, let him maybe try to combine with the Oku, Akumu mm -hmm. and then see what the fruits come from there. Because as far as I'm concerned right now, um, Timothy Oma, who is always is now a talk of the town and is being traced by a number of clubs abroad, he wants to show himself and prove his worth to the public and all fans around the world. And it's a moment for him also to up his career and maybe to convince more suitors that indeed I'm the right person and that will also increase his value. There were rumors that he, Brentford are monitoring him. Do you feel like uh, he has what it takes to play in the Premier League? Absolutely. He's still a young boy mm -hmm. and he's still transitioning. Remember, he is coming from, from Nairobi City Stars mm -hmm. and uh, he's one of the players we have watched, we have seen his progress and uh, even his uh, school games, I, um, I happened to watch him. So I'm not surprised with the level that this boy is trying to bring right now and I'm pretty sure if by chance he managed to cross over to to EPL, he'll open doors for other people. Remember, he was the first ever Kenyan to score mm -hmm. in the European League. Yes. Yeah. So that tells you this lad has really matured and is ready to take on whoever comes on to his world. And I'm pretty sure with the with the chance he's gonna get maybe depending where the coach will field him, that is engine fear at trust him or not, he'll at least show us the value of why he's being uh, chased by other top clubs I in strong, Europe. I strongly feel that if we were to play him in our national team, yes. we need to play him in blind places, blind spaces. What I mean by blind spaces that does not really necessarily need that, as you, may, as you said earlier, uh, f fast pace of thinking. You know, on ball, for more so wing and forward lines, does not need to think twice before even you necessarily place that ball where it's required. Because the fast nature of thinking yeah, actually places, mm -hmm. places the defenders off the ball. Yeah. And watching him yesterday, he still embraced the code of taking the ball down mm -hmm. and Relax, holding yeah. it. Yes. Yeah. And that does not and actually making a decision. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. And even that decision does not come that quite easily. Because yesterday I see him dribbling and losing it to the opponent. And mm -hmm. that's what he used to do even when he's having, recently when he's trading for Rambesta. Mm -hmm. He takes the ball dribble the ball until he forgets that he's playing among Absolutely. other players. Absolutely, that yeah. necessarily is what I think that maybe is the link that if he crosses over to EPL that will be injected into him. Mm -hmm. He needs Quick somebody thinking. who can really impress that nature and make him now start really. He's still young. Mm -hmm. Two, three years down the line, he can actually delete the aspect of holding the ball as he's playing along the pitch and start spreading it to the uh, teammates and maybe make it work as a team. Moving forward. Are we winning this tie against Cameroon? No matter way. Uh, recent history favors uh, Kenya. Kenya has not lost to Cameroon. I think the last three matches or so. Mm -hmm. And I remember um, the late train had it Fabish uh, managed to frustrate them uh, more so because uh, they do at home and mm -hmm. also do in Yaounde that particular year. And um, it is high time and that should be the something that motivates the current crop of players and the, the team that if they can go there with the psych 
and um, that mentality that indeed we can play and win. Remember also Arambe Stars always uh, turns up or show rises up to the occasion when they play against the big, big teams. Big teams. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. trust you me not, this particular uh, two-legged tie, the minimum points you can get, there'll be four points. I'm pretty Cedric, sure about winning? that one. No, not quite sure, but I think our game being played in Uganda, that's to us. I'm banking on it. Arambesta can necessarily, given to the nature of how their first leg will play away from mm -hmm. uh, fro, fro, from Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, I sa I'm so quite certainly that Cameroon actually ha is meeting Kenya when it, their form is... Has deepened. Uh, deepened to an aspect of what is really going around their team. Mm -hmm. And that should be capitalized by our technical bench vis-a-vis -vis our players, given to the advantage that maybe them they will be going there knowing what is happening that particular A dejected kind of Cameroon stands a chance of actually losing it to Kenya. If Kenya assemble their team very well and also given the nature of the player that we are calling in, if they are 100% fit enough to represent us. The, yes. big, the, the biggest player should be that mm. Akumu maybe shakes off from groin injury because mm -hmm. remember he, he, he was sidelined in their game against PSG. I think so PSG or which game. Mm. So he has been uh, snatching a groin injury and you know a groin injury can take even for four or five months. We don't know what miracle will happen for him to make it to the team, to the final squad. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that is your Sports Weekly with Zarek Musumba, Roger Sishtemi and Robinson Okenye. These are wasted talents. Hmm? Wasted talents. <laughs> <laughs>